Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson, and I'm with Fairwinds Associates. I wanted to talk about some uh, satellite and uh, uh, airplane video pictures that have just recently been uh, received from Fukushima and explain what I believe those photographs show about how the plant might be recovered. We're going to put on your screen um, a satellite picture of the plant and I'm going to walk through it right now. First off, on the bottom of the picture, uh, labeled number one, that is the break wall. Uh, that's the tsunami barrier that was breached by the wave. But the next thing is a little bit of water and then land. That's labeled number two. Right there should have been service water pumps. Service water pumps are emergency related pumps that are designed to cool the plant after an accident. They're gone. So what this tells me is that even though the, even if the diesels hadn't been flooded, they would have failed anyway because they wouldn't have had any cool water to pump throughout the plant. This is what we call a single point of vulnerability. And it appears that the safety system would have failed anyway, even if the diesels didn't flood. The next thing is a large building called a turbine building. And it's, a, it, it's the most massive structure on the drawing and really means nothing for nuclear safety. It's where the electricity would be generated. So we're going to skip over that. Behind that are four what used to be boxes. And those are the Mark I containments. On the top right side of the picture is Unit 1, then Unit 2, then Unit 3, then Unit 4. And uh, starting at the top right, Unit 1, the, uh, the top structure, the, the metallic structure over top of the, uh, the, the nuclear containment building is totally destroyed. You should, at this angle, be able to look in and see the nuclear fuel pool, and you can't. Now, that tells me it's probably um, obliterated by rubble, or it might be empty. There should be a blue dot somewhere in that picture showing water, and I don't see any. The next one down is a, appears to be intact, but if you look closely at the lower side of that building, you'll see steam coming out. That's the Unit 2 containment. And I don't know why steam is coming out, but it's not a good sign. The next one down is Unit 3, totally obliterated. And of course, that's the one that's in danger of melting down. And the last one on the lowest, the, the lower left side is Unit 4. This picture doesn't show it well, but there are pictures on the web that show it a little better. That's the one that has a crack in the side of it. That's where the nuclear fuel pool is believed to be dry. Uh, this picture shows, um, shows it, but you really need a good set of eyes. I'd advise if you're interested in looking at that, you can scavenge the web for Unit 4 pictures, and there are better ones. Well, there's a couple other things to look at on that picture. First, where are the people? There's nobody on this site. Um, that's a bad sign. There's obviously very limited uh, work being done. But the second thing is, judging by the condition of Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, and Unit 4's reactor buildings, it's clear to me that the pipes and pumps and valves inside are probably not working, or at least not working very well. Now, Tokyo Electric is trying to get electricity back into those pumps, but considering the condition of this plant, it, it's not clear to me that when they turn those pumps on, there's going to be a pipe on the other end of it that's ultimately going to get to the nuclear reactor. So I've said before that this is going to be a long slog, and I think this picture confirms it. There's, um, it's likely that um, Tokyo Electric will get power in. Maybe the pumps will run. But what are they going to pump? They're not going to pump normal cooling water because that's been obliterated. They'll have to jury-rig a system to pump seawater into those nuclear reactors. And um, of course, it'll come out as steam. But that assumes that not only does the pump work, but the pipe works and the valves work and the connection into the nuclear reactor works. There's a lot of assumptions there that, that may not uh, turn out to be true. And lastly, you know, when you pump salt water into a nuclear reactor, it builds up contaminants on the nuclear fuel. 
And that's likely to clog the nuclear fuel in the next several days if the salt water ever does make the nuclear reactor, then make cooling, cooling the reactor core that much harder. Well, thank you very much, and we'll keep in touch.